Stock trading is a mentally challenging and often lonely game. Ask people in your personal life if they can spell S&P 500. I bet more than half of them can't do it. Therefore, it should be no surprise that common folk enjoy the investing guidance of a financial advisor that takes a 2% cut of your total holdings every year to underperform the NASDAQ for you. Or for those that reject the supervision of an overcompensated gambling addict with a Series 7 license, there are plenty of stock gurus out there who have no problem recommending stocks on television and YouTube. Perhaps the most well-known is our bald friend Jim Cramer, host of Mad Money on CNBC. If Bloomberg were the MMA of finance, CNBC is the WWE. Tons of personality, a bit less skill than the real professionals. And that would make Jim Cramer the Hulk Hogan of the finance world. I had an economics teacher in high school who gave his students a stock trading game where we all lost all of our money in the 2008 crash. This teacher described himself to me as a Kramer guy and was so successful trading stocks that he bought one kilogram of gold bullion in 2007 to keep in a safe in his basement in order to diversify. How much money do you need to have before you decide to buy a kilogram of something that normal people measure in troy ounces, all basically for fun? But if Kramer was making people enough money to buy racks of gold coins back in the day, that trust must have gotten dinged hard when he told people to hold Bear Stearns in March 2008 when the stock was trading for $62 a share. Five days later, literally five days later, it got bought out at $2 per share, a 96% loss. Since then, it's been a running joke that the people making real money listening to Jim Cramer are doing the opposite of what he says. They inverse his bets. If we're keeping it real, 2022 has been a rough time for investors so far. Bulls got blown out in January, and then the overconfident bears who got their first taste of making money in two years all had their 20% out of the money puts destroyed during a three-day relief rally. But during all this time, what they say is true. Inversing Jim Cramer has proven a very lucrative strategy. Between November and January, the Mad Money host announced plans several times to buy more shares of PayPal so as to buy the dip around $200. Since then, the stock has tanked to 132 following its largest single-day drop ever after earnings on February 1st missed estimates by a penny. Fortunately for him, those shares were mostly acquired in his charitable trust, and the orphans benefiting from that trust are used to people letting them down. But you know who did make some money on PayPal this month? Reddit user YKillYou2009, who inversed Jim Cramer. At market close on Tuesday, February 1st, less than an hour before earnings, why kill you yeeted $64,000 into 200 put contracts at the 165 strike expiring on Friday. Then, earnings came out and tanked the stock 23% after hours. Our man walked out with $507,000 overnight. Now, I'm not saying we should be taking high five-digit sums and throwing them into 10% out-of-the-money puts expiring in three days. But I am saying that if you did, you'd have also made half a million. January 3rd, Jim Cramer tweets a very simple message. Netflix buy. As Kobe suggests, maybe Jim is a big fan of Cobra Kai and Squid Game and wants people to buy Netflix subscriptions to watch it. But we all know Jim is talking about the stock. Over the next three weeks, Netflix drops 13%. January 20th, Netflix reports strong earnings but declining subscriber growth, and the stock drops another 20% immediately, ultimately bottoming at a 40% loss from the Mad Lad's bullish call. But those who inversed Jim were rewarded with thick bags. User GAN, $3,000 to $93,000 with puts. Gains between 1,000 and 8,000% on his contracts. Tartarin Mix, $88 of beer money into $4,000 with puts. Scare Eagle, $18,000 to $79,000. Nice Guy, $81. Arjo, the list goes on. Anyone who bet against Jim Cramer absolutely banked. October 26th, Facebook rebrands to Meta and describes its exciting plans to let you play Roblox in virtual reality. NFT scams go nuts selling digital land and characters in a game that will never be released. Kramer gets very bullish on Zuck's metaverse plan and announces his buy rating. Three months of sideways trading later on January 28th, Jim reiterates his buy rating. February 2nd, Meta misses earnings, Zuck issues weak guidance, and the stock drops 24% to a new 52-week low. And coincidentally, Zuck loses $28 billion and still has more money than me. But who made money? The contrarians. User Run Fast Nation, 1.6k to 50k. Subkeys, 3k to 59.6k. Jacklock, 366, 40k to 170k. This consistent trend has people begging for an inverse Jim Cramer ETF. iCrame, ticker ICRM. Administratively, if Jim Cramer were to attempt to undermine iCrame by recommending people buy it, this would force the ETF to short itself, which would drive the price down, thus defeating Jimmy Chill's projection once again. 
If Kramer were to recommend shorting iCrame, then the fund would long itself, driving prices higher. This fund would therefore be undefeatable and should make a great investment. But where are we on such an exotic financial instrument? According to my extensive Google searching, there is plenty of speculation about, but no progress on actually producing an ETF. Apparently, Eric Balkunas from Bloomberg thinks this ETF is coming, but I think he's wrong. There's absolutely no way to capture Jimmy's picks since he shouts a bunch of random buy, hold, and sell alerts on Mad Money, and then he changes his mind all the time and he doesn't disclose all of his trades. Basically, all you'd get with iCrame is short positions on meme stocks and long Kathy Wood. What we do have is a handful of Twitter pages that seek to announce Jim's positions so as to inverse them, but this is a far cry from an actual inverse Kramer ETF. Strangers on the internet tweeting inverse Kramer picks is no basis for an exchange traded fund. When you look at a chart like this where Kramer underperforms the S&P, or this clip of him farting on live television, it's easy to think he's a stooge. But what you wouldn't know at first glance is that this portfolio is a charitable trust, so it's designed to be less volatile than the S&P and should be flatter, Netflix aside. And as for his untimely flatulence, Kramer has been long Chipotle for a long time, so this is expected. I'm no big fan of Jim. He told me to sell my shares of realty income in 2018 for $50. I'm glad I inversed him and bought more. But if we can't take Jimmy Kramer's word for it, and we can't really inverse him either, then where should we get our investing guidance? From ourselves. But I don't mean sit around and think about stocks all day. I do that anyway because I'm a functioning gambling addict, but it hasn't improved my trading. When I've got a stock in mind, I look at Seeking Alpha to see what analysts, both professional and retail, have to say. My favorite analyst right now is Asian Investor because he's automatically good at math and gives me down-to-earth evaluation of stocks that are catching media buzz. There are also a lot of shills and scrubs on Seeking Alpha, but that's why I say rely on yourself as the primary investing source. Collect information about your stock, gather thoughts from analysts, and then make the decision to smash or pass by yourself. On the free version of Seeking Alpha, you get stock screeners and virtually limitless articles on every security in the order book. For premium members like myself, you also get analysis from the Quant. That's an artificial intelligence that exists explicitly to evaluate stocks on hundreds of metrics, so it's better at trading than I am. I rarely ever make a new investment without first consulting the Quant to see if it's a buy, hold, or sell. It's the reason I bought LRCX, that's LAM Research, in the low 300s, and why I passed on Riot Blockchain at 26. Although Seeking Alpha isn't sponsoring this video specifically, their sponsorship from the last 3K Challenge episode is still active, and they're offering 50% off membership prices for as long as the subscriber stays active. Click my link in the description to see more and claim your lifetime discount. Getting back to old Jim, as we have fun dunking on him, we must accept his counter dunks. On May 26th, Jim said to buy Tesla at around 620. I did not listen. For many years, Jim said buy and hold Apple, and of course sitting on 500 shares of Apple myself, I am pleased with the results. And probably the best one, Jim said to buy AMD when it was $10. My dumbass wheeled it thrice and now I have 6 shares. The real reason people want to buy iCrame is because it's fun to clown Kramer. But do I really want to own it? No, not really. You know what I would like better? An insider trader ETF, ticker Nancy. If I could buy into an actively managed ETF that tracks Nancy Pelosi's two-week delayed financial disclosures, count me in. Forget iCream, long Nancy. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.